All right, guys and girls and people of the world. Today we are looking at a practical and we are testing osmosis in a potato. A good old potato. Okay, so what's going to follow is the method and then uh, we are going to be making this potato into a very holy potato. Uh, so watch and see how we carry this out. Very simple experiment. So for this experiment, of course, we will need the potato. Uh, we'll need cork borers, one is bigger than the other, you'll see why in a bit. A white tile, a scalpel, a ruler that you can see here, a test tube rack with five boiling tubes. And we need different concentrations of a sucrose, which is basically a sugar solution. Uh, so we have one molar, 0 0.75, 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.25, and then finally distilled water. And we have uh, measuring cylinders as well as pipettes. Now you've got to make sure that you avoid contamination. So there'll be five stations and uh, keep the pipettes within their respective stations and do not move them about. So you're probably wondering, what do we do with the potato? Well, it's quite simple. What we do is we take the potato and we um, take the cork borer and we're going to press a hole into it. So you got to hold the potato firmly um, so that you don't end up slipping and injuring yourself. Right. So once you've done that, you can take your potato out or your cork borer out, sorry. Which is what I've done. I've just taken it out. And you, as you can see, it's a holy potato now. And then what you're going to do is you're going to stick the other cork borer into this one and push it out. So just to demonstrate, I must put that back in there so I can just show you what I mean, just in case somebody does not understand. So I'm going to push this into here, right? Now I'm going to take them both out, obviously, because otherwise the potato probably won't come out. And um, then I'm going to, so these will both be out, and I'm going to slide the cylinder of potato out. So just to show you, I've put in the smaller cork borer in, and it's pushed the cylinder of a potato out now we've got to cut it down to size so now I have this uh, potato and we're gonna cut it down to size okay so what I want to do is I want to make it three centimeters long so I've got it on my white tile and the first thing I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna cut off the edges and let me show you why because it has pota potato skin on it and what that means is that that will not allow uh, water in or out so that is not partially permeable membrane so we need to cut that off and we of course cut that off using a scalpel now guys this is a scalpel it is not a samurai knife or samurai sword or any other type of toy right now that samurai sword is a toy but you get what I'm saying uh, handle these carefully they will be counted in and counted well counted out and then counted back in you know what I'm saying and measure it to three centimeters from the end to the other end and that is where I'm going to cut now we are going to do five cuttings of these and I'll tell you what the problem with that is a bit later okay so I've cut my first one to uh, three centimeters I'm going to repeat the whole process until I have five three centimeter pieces of potato so here I've cut my five pieces of potato chips to three centimeters of course the accuracy is as accurate as I could make it on this there are other equipment in which you can increase and improve the accuracy so what's next once you've cut these out you're gonna to go to a weighing scale and you're going to measure the mass of it next, basically what you're gonna do is at eye level you're going to measure um, 10 centimeter cubed of each one of these solution including the distilled water and then you're gonna place individually within the boiling tube let me give you an example so here I'm going to go to eye level and I'm going to look for the meniscus that is um, the bubble to be just on the 10 milliliter line the meniscus so I'm going to be at eye level and just fill this up to 10 milliliters So if you look here, and I just want to show you, because when, when I was standing up, I couldn't, I, I thought it was on 10, but the meniscus, the bottom bit of that bubble, is on um, 
9.2468 so that's why you have to be at eye level and check properly so I'm gonna add drop by drop until it, the meniscus the bottom of the meniscus is at 10 and there you have it accurate 10 milliliters so this is of 0.25 sucrose I'm going to add this into my boiling tube and I'm going to do the same but put it into a different boiling tube for 0.5 0.75 no point at uh, 1.0 and the distilled water so i need to measure at 10 mils of the distilled water as well so this one is going into my first boiling tube so there's my boiling tube i'm just going to place this 0.25 solution of sucrose into this one and i'm going to fill up the next one with 0.5 0.75 1.0 molar and finally this would be my distilled water then what you do once you've filled all of them up is you place in your potato chips so all of these will have solutions in and you place in your potato chips into each one add a label and label it with what you have in it plus your group initials then what you're going to do is quite simply you're going to leave it for 24 hours and see how the mass changes so in terms of our results table, our results table would look like this. Now the first column of a results table is always the independent variable. So in other words, the one that we're changing. What we are changing within this experiment is the concentration of sucrose solution. Um, here we've got our initial mass. So that's the mass that we measure first. And then our final mass, which is 24 hours later. And what we have to do is we have to work out the percentage change in mass over that 24 hour time period. However, to calculate this, there is an equation that we need to use, and the equation is as follows. Percentage change in mass is equal to the final mass, take away the initial mass, so in other words, that's saying the change in mass, divided by the starting mass, or the initial mass. And then we're gonna multiply all of that by 100. Now we will get positive and negative values. Then what you need to do with your results is as follows, or you need to draw a graph. The graph will be percentage change in mass on the y-axis versus concentration of sucrose solution uh, in moles. So I, did, I forgot the units there, which is not good, but you need to add that in and draw, plot your data. Then what you'll have is you'll have uh, a graph that has a negative gradient. And the important bit about this mass or this graph is this point here this is where the gradient meets the x x axis it's important because it shows no change so zero change in mass so what this is telling you is that no water entered and no water left via osmosis so in other words this is telling you the concentration of uh, the potato the concentration of sugar and water sugar within the potato so that's why that is important. Now, your percentage change in mass will have positive values because it increases at some point and negative values. That's why the zero point is in the middle because you'll have some positive percentage change and some negative percentage change indicating that the potato got bigger or the potato got smaller. And that is the end of that, guys. Um, if you have any questions, do let me know. But I think that is pretty simple, practical. Just don't forget to measure the mass because that's what a lot of people do. And believe it or not, it's what I did while filming this demonstration. See ya.